If you control a nation's information, you control its people. If you control a nation's money, you control a nation's information. Therefore, if you control a nation's money, you control a nation's people. Because if they are afraid to speak out, because they might have their life destroyed, their savings robbed from them, put in jail, you know, ostracized from public life, a variety of other nasty and truly tyrannical things um, that, that are potential chilling effects on speech, then they might not say the thing to begin with. And if they say the thing to begin with and you do that, and your social media companies are part of some sort of massive interconnected agreement to do that sort of thing and sort of tow a given line, um, then you know what you get? You get people who, if they lose their their sort of voice on social media, they might lose their money and their lives at the same time. Now, why do I bring this up? Why do I bring up the fact that basically we're getting into dystopian, um, you know, terror land? Why do I bring that up? Well, because um, I feel like I feel like there are some facts that are worth mentioning here. Like, there is a leaked FBI pamphlet that lists misinformation and disinformation as an election crime. An FBI 2022 midterm elections social media analysis cheat sheet leaked to Project Veritas by an agency whistleblower lists misinformation and disinformation as election crimes. Keep that in mind for a story shortly. Disinformation, false or inaccurate information intended to mislead others. Disinformation campaigns on social media are, are, are used to deliberately confuse, trick, or upset the public. Misinformation. False or misleading information spread mistakenly or unintentionally. Now, I want you guys to think about that for just a second. They have two different categories, and they're both considered crimes, according to this FBI document. But their first category, intentionally spreading misinformation. And their second category, accidentally doing it. So if you say something that isn't true, that you know isn't true, that's a crime, according to these people. And if you say something that uh, you didn't know wasn't true, um, they can still accuse you of a crime. Now, just to be clear, I'm not a fan of misinformation or disinformation. Um, as somebody who has been repeatedly and maliciously smeared by hundreds of people uh, a year minimum, uh, and oftentimes thousands of people, I kind of know what it's like to be the victim of vicious online campaigns. But, let's be super fucking clear here and say that if you give the government the power to decide that the quality of somebody's information should put them in jail, you're ending up with the government with the ability to universally police people's beliefs. And that is hell. That is a world where the government has universal control and you can't even question it. Because if you question it, they'll lock you up. It's the kind of tyranny that you ended up with in communist Russia, and by communist I mean state capitalist, but you know, they called it communist. Uh, communist China, and by communist I mean state capitalist, but they called it communist anyway. Uh, wait, you know, I could just keep going. And you know, the, the real, the real key defining factor of these uh, terrible places is that they have a centralized currency, 
uh, constantly monitored social media and a government willing to, you know, control uh, people based on what they said online or anywhere else. Um, it's almost like the right to speech and thought are like the rights fundamentally underpinning the rest of them, maybe. Possibly. Could be. And it could be that when you end up without that right, um, or with, in this case, that right being fundamentally challenged by laws against saying things that the government disagrees with, that that's going to end up with a government that will force you to agree with it, or at least not act like you don't. That's tyranny, that's evil, and that's going to end in catastrophe. Because if you can't argue with the warmongers, if you can't argue with the evil parasites in office, then these people will have unchecked power to do with the world what they want. And we already know that these people have a bloody and brutal agenda because they literally drew it in murals on the Denver International Airport and various other places where they celebrate population control and mass death. So let's be super fucking clear that that is evil, and it should be stopped. Um, but this, this thing here, it says that these are, <laughs> you know, crimes. That it's crimes to do this. Uh, and, and they say this on a 2022 midterm elections social media analysis cheat sheet. So, the FBI is monitoring your social media, and they're deciding what you're allowed to say and not allowed to say, and while they do that, they're going to start prosecuting you as a criminal. Man, you know, that would sound super unreasonable. It might seem like I'm jumping to conclusions or something, right? Well, it would seem that way if the federal court just didn't rule that disinformation could be prosecuted. But hey, wouldn't it be really fucking funny if that was the case? W wow, uh, if you look at this, uh, the, <laughs> the <laughs> courthouse news service is totally okay with bringing this up. Disinformation can be a crime, First Circuit rules. A decision upholding one state's criminal defamation law could become a vehicle for the Supreme Court to expand free speech. What? New Hampshire lawmakers did not run afoul of the Constitution in making it a crime to ridicule people with false statements, the First Circuit held Tuesday. But a concurring judge said it's time for the Supreme Court to overrule its precedent in this area. Quote, the case could be a vehicle for the Supreme Court to revisit the doctrine of criminal defamation for the first time in more than 50 years, said Jeffrey Hunt, a First Amendment expert at Parr Brown in Salt Lake City, Utah. It was 1964 that Supreme Court held defamation can be a crime, while looking at the prosecution of New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison for verbally attacking a number of judges. Garrison was famously portrayed by Kevin Costner in Oliver Stone's 1991 film JFK. In a concurring opinion Tuesday, however, U.S. Circuit Judge O. Roger Reed Thompson called it time to revisit the idea. Such laws cannot be reconciled with our democratic ideals of robust debate and uninhibited free speech, Thompson opined. These laws have their genesis in undemocratic systems that criminalized any speech criticizing public officials, she added. It strikes me as out of touch with reality to suggest these laws are not being selectively harnessed, or that these laws aren't particularly susceptible to abuse. The ruling comes less than three months after the DHS disbanded its Disinformation Governance Board, which had attempted unsuccessfully to federalize the policing of false statements. Today's case, uh, out the New Hampshire Supreme Court, involves a comment posted online to a newspaper article. Robert Fries, 67, who lived in a trailer park in Exeter, 
accused the police officer described in the piece of being corrupt, and he said the officer's daughter was a prostitute. After he was arrested for the comment, State law said he wasn't entitled to a jury trial or court-appointed lawyer. Ultimately, however, the charges were dropped. Freeze and the ACLU, in turn, brought a lawsuit to strike down the law prescribing false statements that expose someone to public hatred, contempt, or ridicule. On the First Amendment issue, the First Circuit said it was bound by the Supreme Court's 1964 precedent. The 27-page ruling by U.S. Circuit Judge Jeffrey Howard also rejects the ACLU's claim that the law was unconstitutionally vague. The statute, quote, provides adequate guidelines for law enforcement, Howard wrote. We doubt that reasonable persons will have much difficulty in ascertaining objectively whether a false statement exposes the victim to public hatred, contempt, or ridicule. So, <laughs> Freeze was also charged in 2012 and had to pay a $372 fine after he called someone's life coaching business a scam on Craigslist. The police claimed there was no evidence that his statements were true, but the New Hampshire Department of Justice stepped in after the case generated local publicity. It said that even if the statements were false, Freeze shouldn't be prosecuted if he believed they were true. So there you go. It's a, it's a nice little debate there about whether or not disinformation is going to be a crime. And right now, as of this ruling, due to the way case law can be used, it is. And right now, the FBI is actively pursuing this as a vehicle for isolating and controlling opinion online, on social media, and accusing anyone who spreads disinformation or misinformation of being a criminal. Y'all, this is dystopian. It means that if you, if you say something that they disagree with, there's every likelihood they could be knocking on your door to arrest you. It's like the Dankula situation, but in America. Isn't that fucking dandy, y'all? Like, we got, like, all the basic building blocks of extreme tyranny. And it gets worse. Why does it get worse? Well, because they're not doing it to everyone. It is selectively enforced. And how do we know that? Well, because... There's a study that exposes a misinformation campaign pushing pro-American narratives on Twitter and Facebook. Graphica and the Standard uh, Internet Observatory released a study showing a series of covert campaigns over a period of almost five years that pushed pro-Western misinformation on Twitter, Facebook, and five other social media platforms. The operations targeted people living in Central Asia and the Middle East. An investigation was launched after Twitter and Murda turned over the data, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be meta, on two overlapping accounts to Graphica and the Standard Internet Observatory. The accounts were removed in July and August for violating the terms of service, including platform manipulation and inauthentic behavior. Uh, Libertarian Institute, if you need an editor so it, it doesn't say um, teams of service, uh, hit me up, I could use the cash. Um, <laughs> including platform manipulation and inauthentic behavior. Those were what I was banned for for a year and a half until Twitter admitted that they lied about it. I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later, too. According to the executive summary, our joint investigation found an interconnected web of accounts on Twitter, Facebook, and inter... And it According to the executive summary, our joint investigation found an interconnected web of accounts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and five other social media platforms that use deceptive tactics to promote pro-Western narratives in the Middle East and Central Asia. It continues, the platform's datasets appear to cover a series of covert campaigns over a period of almost five years rather than one homogenous operation. End quote. One operation by the covert accounts was directed at Central Asia. A narratives. I need to edit your, your 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 articles here. The fake accounts tried to spread was painting Russia 
as the looming enemy. Assets in the group consistently portrayed Russia as a threat to Central Asia. A recurring narrative claimed that Russia is abusing Russian Central Asian partnerships, namely the CSDO, to extract one-sided benefits. The assets also said that Central Asian countries must leave these organizations if they wish to retake their full sovereignty from Russia. Central Asia operations also sought to portray Russia as a villain and support the Ukrainian war effort. On several occasions, the accounts attempted to generate hashtag campaigns supporting Kyiv. The covert accounts, campaigns against Iran, linked to articles from fake media outlets to spread misinformation. The report says several suspended accounts were linked to two sham media outlets operating in Persian. However, not all the posts are linked to phony media outlets. The accounts frequently link to stories from U.S. government-funded sources like Voice of America. Different operation attempted to set the discourse on the war in Yemen. These accounts shared content critical of Iranian Houthi rebel activity in Yemen. Posts accuse Houthi rebel leaders of blocking humanitarian aid deliveries, acting as proxies for Iran and Hezbollah, the report authors wrote. While Grafica and the Standard, Stanford Internet Observatory do not name a culprit for the misinformation campaigns, they say the accounts were likely ineffective at spreading misinformation. Quote, the data also shows the limitations of using inauthentic tactics to generate engagement and build influence online. The vast majority of posts and tweets were, we reviewed received no more than a handful of likes or retweets. But that's just one of their many propaganda outlets, you see. Because, for those of you who watched my video yesterday and have been watching me for a while, you know about the Radio Free program, which is literally just CIA bullshit and U.S. government-supported fucking bullshit. Like, they'll literally just, they'll make a page in that country's native language and post U.S. government propaganda. And these accounts are verified on Twitter, they're verified on all these platforms. These platforms love the CIA and their direct state-controlled narrative. And, and unlike also, while I'm talking about that, um, I might as well also bring up that in Vlog 100, uh, I went over the fact that literally Twitter was misinforming people by using AP and Time articles, which were misinforming people, because the IRS was, in fact hiring 87,000 IRS agents and fact-checkers on Twitter accuse that of being misinformation. AP, the Nazi propagandists, said like people were being misleading about the IRS ranks growing with no proof. Time magazine, known for admitting collusion against Trump, said that Biden wouldn't be hiring 87,000, even though that's exactly what he said he would do. They lied about it, trending because Trump's house got searched, when it trended before that. And this is just lies that they're telling you. They're just telling you lies. And they're totally okay with those lies. Those lies won't get prosecuted because they serve the interests of the state. And if you lie on the, at the behest of the establishment, you win. They'll let you do it. Um, and that's exactly what they were doing here. They were lying literally at the behest and funding of the establishment. Um, and, and you know... While it's doing that, YouTube is saying that they're going to start uh, removing misinformation about abortion, you know? And and while that's happening, uh, Big Tech uh, banned claims that vaccinated co COVID-vaccinated people could still spread COVID. Now the government admits it was hope and not science. This is on Reclaim the Net. And while that is happening, wow, would you look at that? Um... A little buried thing that came up in June. Uh, <laughs> Google, Twitter, Meta, TikTok, and more just signed the EU's anti-disinformation code. A new commitment to curb online speech. This is also from Reclaim the Net. <laughs> Big tech companies have signed a new version of the European Union's anti-disinformation code. Some of the companies that signed include Google, Twitter, Meta, TikTok, and Twitch, but also smaller players such as Vimeo and Clubhouse. There are 34 signatories in total. Adobe, Avaz, Clubhouse, Crisp Thinking, Demagogue, <laughs> appropriate name, uh, DOT Europe, European Association of Communication Agencies, the ACA, 
Uh, Factograph, GlobeSec, Google, Interactive Advertising Bureau, IAB Europe, Kinzen, Creativitet and Communication, Logically, Maladita.es, Media Math, Meta, Microsoft, Neva, Newsback, NewsGuard, Pangela Politica, Reporters Without Borders, RSF, Seznam, The Bright App, the GARM Initiative, TikTok, Twitch, Twitter, Vimeo, Vost Europe, Who Targets Me, and World Federation of Advertiser. Uh, and it g says Apple declined to sign. The Code of Practice on Disinformation will require online platforms to show how they are tracking harmful content. It will also require platforms to fight harmful misinformation by forming partnerships with fact checkers and developing tools. They will be forced to include indicators of trustworthiness on information verified independently on hot-button issues like COVID-19 and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Perhaps the most notable requirement is providing their efforts to tackle harmful content and disinformation on a country-by-country -country basis. The move was opposed by online platforms, but national regulators demanded that they need more specific data to better address the spread of disinformation. The EU's Vice President for Values and Transparency, Vera Jourova, who is in charge of the code, said, quote, To respond to disinformation effectively, there is a need for the country and language-specific data. We know disinformation is different in every country, and the big platforms will now have to provide meaningful data that would allow to understand better the situation on the country level. What this means, folks is that the governments of every major country and the social media apps that are based in every major country will be collectively monitoring and collecting data on disinformation while these countries, including the U.S. with my First Amendment, on who is doing this disinformation, who they can then call a criminal. Who they can then jail. Who they can then prosecute. Who they can then deplatform, destroy. And given the fact that Fido is connecting all that information with your last pass credentials and telling, um, you know, the government what you're saying because it's going to be connected to your biometric data and your universal ID. It's almost like I was right, and the U.S. government and a bunch of similar governments are going to be using this sort of thing, um, you know, to control people, to say that they can't say certain things, and that if they start to step out of line either in words or in behavior, they're going to be cut off from their finances, their lives, their livelihoods, and everything else about them, and potentially jailed. And it's almost like the CBDC is their road to doing that. And it's almost like we have to oppose every piece of this system, and anybody who gets in our way is the reason that we need to smash the fucking state.